morning everyone good morning everyone how are y'all doing how is january going for you guys today we are yet again going to talk about a very 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 interesting topic which is how to view life from the state of watchfulness hey guys good morning how are y'all doing as usual i'm going to give it a few more minutes to see uh how many of y'all are joining me today so let's give it a couple of minutes as usual the same housekeeping rules please read the rules on how to request for a free reading also please look at everything that's on featured because they are very vital to your understanding so that we're all on the same page i hope i'm on the right page i think i am so i'm just gonna <laughs> so i'm just gonna yes i'm just gonna wait for a bit so till then drop me a hi to show me that you are here and what else okay the full moon has been extremely intense for me i think it has been intense for a lot of you as well the interesting bit about this full moon is that it is more of a starter like it kick-started our 2022 and now uh, that's why it's such a vital uh, full moon and whatever we have been feeling in terms of uh, energy shifts is also vital for what we are going to feel and face throughout the year hey henry thank you so much <laughs> yes i'm in the right one and i just saw your message uh, before i <laughs> went into the right room hi maureen how are you hi mahin how are you beautiful hi mj once again thanks to mj we once again came came up with such a good topic because watchfulness is so interesting and many people have spoken about it but actually it follows through from the topic of detachment hi Bharati. yes i had a good week and i think everyone else also had a good week yes the strong influence of full moon marine it is such a strong influence but it's good everything that happens is always for the good hi sylvia so nice to see you as always and hi radhana i actually picked this timing because a lot of you all from europe and uk have been telling me that i'm always going late so i thought okay fine i'm going to do 6 a.m singapore time which is uh, 10 11 um, p.m in the uk in, in europe so <laughs> so this timing is dedicated to all of you in that continent and of course uh, australia new zealand as well because it's early morning all right i'm just going to wait for another minute and then we can start and as usual please feel free to ask me any questions in between don't worry about inter interrupting my flow and i'm going to talk about the full moon for another minute or so so this full moon is as all full moons has its own magic but this full moon in particular focused on getting us to rest getting us to introspectively look within also for twin flames in particular this full moon has not only been intense for the divine feminine collective it has also been intense for the divine masculine collective in fact um, i've heard from a lot of my clients that uh, their dms are either falling sick or going through uh, some sort of a uh, illness a cleansing and it's all for the good they're feeling better now but during during that full moon weekend it was so intense that they could pick on it and i'm sure most of you all could pick on it too Yes, Marine, yes. You felt like your body was uh, cleaning. Yeah, it's a good way to put it, you know. And it's good because it's detox. And we need the detox at the start of the year so that we could uh, survive the entire year. The, the full moon next month is going to be a little more subtle. It's not going to be intense as this month. So that is something to look forward to. Oh, there's 14 of you all. So I'm going to start. All right. 
what is the state of watchfulness? This is one of my favorite topics. So how do you actually, it's actually very easy to go into that state of watchfulness. Basically, you're watching your own life from the state of higher perspective. Oh, I'm so, yes, Andrew, I'm so sorry you got ill, but I hope you're feeling better now. Hi, Anna. Hi, Amy. Yes. Yes, there's so much happening, Maureen. Yep. And, and that's the reason why it's so important for us to eat healthy, drink a lot of water, engage in mindfulness, meaningful things, things that actually make you happy. And, and I'm, I'm so proud of you all because I think um, some people tend to believe that just being with your twin flame is the only thing that's going to make them happy. But that's not true. We have a life beyond our twin flames. And that's the reason why it is important to find joy in ourselves, joy in day-to-day -day activities, joy in the food we eat, the people we interact with. Of course, it's always, but all these things are what's going to lead you to union. Some, some um, twin flames, especially in the early stages, would tend to be so obsessed in a negative way that uh, th that's what pushes them away. And actually, that's what triggers the, the push and pull phase. So that's why it's very important to keep it cool and chill all the time. And it's hard and I and <laughs> I know it's hard and but I'm, I'm making it sound so easy, but it's all about vibrating from a certain level. And that is the reason why if you were to ask twin flames in union, they will tell you the reason why they're in union <laughs> because of the level they are vibrating on. And that's why it's so important to vibrate at this certain frequency of unconditional love and detachment and love for self and community, you know, that, that is what triggers that state. See, Henry, as usual, is his bright and happy self. <laughs> my body is recovering, my mind kept laughing, which is good. Laughter is such a good thing to do. Like, just laugh. If you feel sad, laugh. If you feel angry, laugh. Actually, laughter has got the potential to just bring you to that level where you can just vibrate in, in a higher frequency. Oh, that's great, Maureen. Living my life with gratitude and happiness. Gratitude and happiness is another frequency uh, vibration frequency that elevates you instantly. So gratitude, happiness, laughter, these things just get you into that zone. And that's why when people are laughing, they just tend to freeze in that moment. Because, And do you also realize when you laugh, you're not able to think about anything? You can't simultaneously laugh and think about something. So laughter kinds of... So laughter is more of that... Um, if you were to take the whole... Um, electricity chain laughter tends to just light up all the bulbs in an electricity circuit you know in school we used to learn about how things light up in a circuit same thing laughter actually lights your brain brain up and that's what elevates your frequency so back to the topic of detachment and viewing your life from a state of watchfulness it's very practical so example you are this person right you're seated and like I'm right here talking to you all, I can also choose to view myself from a higher perspective, which is the fifth dimension. I can start viewing what I'm saying, what I'm speaking, what I'm facing in terms of challenges from the state of the fifth dimension. And when I do this, I am completely detached to my problems because I'm viewing my life from the outside, from the state of watching myself. And when you start practicing it, you get better at it. And, and the more you do it, the more you're comfortable with viewing your problems, your challenges, your, your issues from the higher perspective. And when you do that, things instantly shift. So for instance, you're feeling very down. 
that your divine masculine is not messaging you for it for instance right so what do you do instead of just being in your 3d body mind and soul you try to come out of it and view yourself observe your thought patterns observe your emotions like think of it this way like why am i thinking this way why am i thinking why my dm is not responding to me or why am i thinking uh is there something I'm doing that's preventing my DM from messaging me? Or So when you do it from an external perspective, a higher perspective, your perception shifts immediately. You will start laughing. You'll be like, oh, is that what I'm thinking or feeling? And then you will start being able to see what your twin flame is feeling and experiencing as well. And this is how our psychic abilities are enhanced and that's, how we dig deeper into the 5D connection of our Divine Masculine. I'm going to read Amy's comment. I think that's why we are separated now for sure. Too much with thoughts. Yes, when you think obsessively too much about your Divine Masculine or Divine Feminine, what happens is you actually push them away because <laughs> Twin Flames have a telepathic bridge, right? <laughs> Obviously, they feel you all the time. So when you constantly think of them, they think about them they actually know that you're thinking about them and that is why it is vital you see when you think of them from 5d you actually don't push them away because your love comes from a space of higher unconditional love so this doesn't push them away in fact it brings them closer and that's why I keep telling you all, detach but connect from a higher dimension. And higher dimension is not something that you have to attain or achieve. It's like when you pray to God, for an instance, you feel this silence, you know, just, and that silence in itself is the answer that you're seeking. And that's the same thing when you are actually vibrating from, a, from the fifth dimension, you're starting to see life as a as this immense, eternal, infinite, um, oneness kind of, of um, frequency. And that's the frequency that comes with constant detachment and letting go. So practically, that's what I'm going to teach you all today. You what you have to do is step one, view yourself from a higher perspective. Any problem, detach yourself from the problem. And how would you advise your friend? Example, your friend is having these thought patterns. I'm getting so sick. My DM is not messaging me. I do not like my DM's behavior. What do I do? Why is he doing this to me? These thoughts are, and, and in our mind, these thoughts are constant, you know, nonstop. And when you have these thoughts, what happens is, your DM actually feels it, not not like how you feel it, um, whatever I just said, but they would instead feel uncomfortable because that is the frequency that you're projecting and they are actually feeling that exact frequency and that's why they are like, oh no, I'm not going to talk to this person, I just feel uncomfortable. So they get that discomfort feeling and that's what pushes them back. So instead, Watch your thoughts. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking of my DM? Is, is, it, is it something that I should work on myself? Is it my own emotions that's making me feel this way? Actually, my divine masculine is not bad. Maybe he's going through something in his life that I'm unable to perceive at this state, but from a higher perspective, I'm able to understand there's some, there are things beyond my knowledge and perception that I'm unable to see at this moment. And when you start thinking this way, your energy shift. And this is what pulls your DM back in for you. So this is one level of watchfulness. And then that comes that connecting with your DM in 5D and communicating with them. But you have to master this skill in order to actually get that. Some of you all uh, get it naturally, instantly, because you're constantly meditating about your DM. So you start seeing them, you perceive them. Uh, some of you all see them in colors, um, in, in, in just like their auric body, 
lying next to you while you're asleep. Some of you all see them in such a physical intricacy that you feel like your DM's 3D self is with you beyond the hologram, you know. So that is also a level of mastery. But again, I don't want to talk it, talk about it such that you have to attain that state to experience this. There's no clear rule. You just get there. It's instant, you know, just like how you laugh. Anyone can laugh, right? And anyone can vibrate at that frequency of laughter, right? Same thing. That is how you actually start um, start vibrating from that frequency of the fifth dimension. You actually enter the state of watchfulness and start watching your life literally from that state and then once you start doing it it will become a habit and then every one of your decisions will be made from a state of watchfulness even even a work decision for instance you know you are you are torn between making this decision you know and you have like 10 different options but if you are going to make a decision from your 3d self emotions and feelings are going to affect that decision but if you bring yourself to the state of watchfulness and start making a decision, you'll realize that, wow, I've never seen this from this perspective. So, so this solution will be the best solution for, for the needs of my work or company, etc. And that's how you start using this skill of watchfulness on a daily basis slowly into your romantic life, it, even family members. For instance, you're having a huge fight. And your natural response would be to react, you know, the, and, and reacting is very 3D. Responding is 5D. Responding is you're responding to what is happening at the moment. Reacting is because, oh, we always fight like this, so I'm just going to go into my anger mode and I'm going to react. So instead of that, respond. Think about it. Why are they screaming at me? What is the reason? Is that something in their life that's bothering them and that's why they're projecting to me? And that's when the shift, the shift takes place and you enter a state of watchfulness. And now tying this back to your communication with your divine masculine. When you enter this state, what you feel is you are actually viewing yourself from this higher dimension. And you're also viewing your divine masculine from that dimension. And that's how you know what they are feeling, what they are thinking. And then you will realize that anything that they do is from a very limited perspective. For instance, they are ignoring you. This is for true tw twin flames only. Uh, some, some connections may appear to be twin flames, but they could be narcissistic or they could be karmic or they could be um, other kinds of connections. So it's vital to identify what connection you are vibrating on and actually that's how you identify if your twin flame is your twin flame you will just know because it's a different frequency it's so similar to yours that you will know that person is your perfect mirror but often what happens is before you meet your true twin flame you tend to meet a narcissist, narcissist or karmics karmics can be very similar to a twin flame experience but the hurt is different. So when your twin flame ignores you, you are actually pushed to learn about yourself and to, and to face your inner fears and to also work on your issues that has been limiting you your whole life. Whereas with karmic or soulmate, it's, not, it's never lesson driven. It's more of you meet them and you have to suffer what you have to suffer. With twin flame, it's never about suffering. It's more about evolving spiritually it's about it's about learning detachment it's about learning watchfulness it's about learning to exist with and without your twin flame at the same moment and that is the reason why detachment is step one watchfulness is step two and you will have to do this and and for those of you all who haven't watched my video on detachment please go check it out that will give you a good uh, background to this video that I've been doing. Exactly. So Melinda's comment, I'll just extend on it. So with Twin Flame Connection, it's never, 
I'm going to just be more uh, clearer about what I said. So with twin flame connections, there's no karmic notion to it. It's not something you have to complete. And, and that's the reason why with twin flame, it's more of, it's about facing your own truth. And it's about actually looking within. So you meet your twin flame for the first time. And the reason why it's, it is it is designed such that you have hauled the coming of home feeling. For some, you have sparks. For some, it's out of the world. Each one of us have different experience. But then the separation phase immediately comes through a couple of months later is because we tend to react to the connection instead of responding. So for a lot of people, a twin flame connection is not the first romantic connection they have. So what happens is their whole life, they meet a variety of connections. And then because they have a variety of connections, when they meet their twin flame for the first time, they get all excited and then they get all obsessed and then they start throwing in the ideas of romantic love that is viewed in the movies or witnessed through social media. And they try to force that concept into this pure, divine, free connection. Twin flame connection is about freedom, love, and detachment. You know, it's never, um, it's never about learning lessons, which is more of a karmic connection. There you have to learn lessons. Whereas it's a higher level kind of lessons. It's not like you're forced to learn lessons. It's more of like you create the cause and effect. So karma in itself is not negative. It's cause and effect. Basically, you have probably had a lifetime with them in the past, and then you're incarnating again in this lifetime to incarnating again in this lifetime to actually complete the cycle that you may have left off. And then in this lifetime, you are given the opportunity to learn the lesson and to make things right. Whereas for twin flame, it's not like that. You are the same soul split into two. So it's more of you're teaching one another to become the best versions of yourself, which is ultimately you. I'm going to read Melinda's comment. When I met Matt Mine, I ignored him not recognizing it. It was so funny. Yes, exactly. See, this happens as well, you know. <laughs> That's why twin flame meetings are very unique to each twin flame couple. And that's why sometimes when people say that they have fireworks and they get all excited and all that, it could be a soulmate or a karmic connection. A twin flame meeting is just different and we all respond to it differently. But what happens is your spiritual gifts activated, your connection to God strengthens because you have no choice. You're going through this heartache that is so intense. Where else? No one's going to understand what you're going, th going through. If you talk to your friends about it, they're going to look at you. Why can't you just treat this as a normal relationship? So what do you do finally? You search within and you start praying to God. And that's why our relationship with God strengthens during the phase of activation. And that's when you start experiencing the dark night of the soul. You start experiencing all... It's, it's like a roller coaster ride. You don't know what to expect even. That's why for karmic relationship, it's quite clear cut. If you really focus into it, you know, okay, fine. I have to learn lessons of anger management. I have to learn lessons of... Um, and that's why karmic relationships tend to be very traumatizing. And usually it's karmic relationships that go through divorce and, and have that unfriendly legal court battles and stuff with twin flame connections it's never like that you know it's all there's always a pleasant notion to it of course the lesson of course the lessons in com okay so if we are going to talk about lessons karmic lessons and twin flame i don't even want to call them lessons twin flame interactions are very different 
you are forced to learn about yourself in a twin flame connection. Whereas in a karmic connection, you are supposed to live out something together. And that's the reason why karmics tend to unite. Karmics tend to actually have a family and children and they live out that cycle that they could not fulfill in their previous lifetime or even current. But with twin flames, it's evolving. It's going on all the time. There is no fixed plan. There is no fixed lesson. There is no there's nothing fixed. It's fluid. A twin flame connection is completely fluid. And then going back to the state of watchfulness, when you actually view this from a state of watchfulness, you will understand that this is a twin flame connection. And if it's a karmic connection or a soulmate connection or a brand new connection, you'll be able to see it from this perspective. That's why it's important to harness this skill. It's like a radar, you know, it's like your sixth sense. I'm just going to read some of the comments. You see, Amy, my ex-husband is true blue narcissist. My person is always loved, even now during separation. He has nothing but respect. See, that's the thing. Amy said it so beautifully. So the ex-husband is a narcissist, a karmic. And your person is your true divine masculine. And you're able to see the difference. Exactly. So Melinda put it really beautifully. It's never lesson driven. Lesson driven is very karmic. You know, you have to complete a cycle. You have to complete a lesson. With Twin Flames, it's actually carving out your own path. There is nothing set in stone. You know, you actually come into each other's life because you are vibrating at a certain frequency and your connection to God is absolutely strong. So if people are actually not even evolving spiritually, you are not meeting your twin flame. You're either meeting a karmic or a soulmate or some other connection. Twin flame connection is very, very, very spiritual. And it actually pushes you, pushes you. I don't even want to use the word pushes you. It actually inspires you to evolve spiritually and learn detachment, unconditional love. Because your twin flame love is pure, true, unconditional love. It is love that you would have never experienced in your lifetime. And that's why twin flame lovemaking is different as well, you know. It's, it's just a different leak. And that's why a lot of people tend to want to fall into that twin flame label because they see it as something they should attain. But twin flame connection is not something you attain. It's something you are. You either are or you're not. And what happens is if you try to push yourself into a twin flame label is when you actually meet your true twin flame, you get confused. So for example, person A meets someone and they are date set on, on making them their twin flame. Okay, so, you know, they go to readers, they get checked, a variety of readers give them a variety of answers. Um, but they don't want to listen to anybody, okay? They are dead set, person, the person I've met is my twin flame, right? And then um, it could be a karmic connection, so there will be a cycle. They may get married and have kids, and then eventually they meet someone, and that person is their true twin flame. What would they do? They are so dead set that this person is my twin flame and then they get embarrassed. They have talked to people about it and then they, they start to get confused. And that's when they start creating, oh, I've got two twin flames. I have three twin flames. It's not like that. And it's okay if you may have identified your own connection wrongly. Usually uh, because there's a false twin flame before you meet your real twin flame. So it's okay. But important thing is you acknowledge and you move on and you evolve from it. And it's okay when a connection is not a twin flame connection. It's no big deal. You don't have to be affected by it. The important thing is you meet your true twin flame. I'm going to share what MJ said. I just remember when I was in separation with you and ghosted, 5D self was always with me. I used to get awful kidney pains, no medication help. So I'd call 5D or he will be by me and had a way of infusing me with his energy and took care of the pain. He loved being a healer. See, this is another thing that you would experience when you actually strengthen your 5D connection. 
which is the state of watchfulness. So thanks, MJ, for sharing with us something very close to you. Uh, I'm going to read. Yes, mine is accepting, helping me accept the lessons I've already experienced and heal. Yes, only God can help you with this pain. And that's why I keep telling you guys. And that's why MJ and I and all of us readers keep telling you only God can help you get through this immense, intense twin flame pain and pain, actually pain. <laughs> Lorena, I feel like people who want to be in a twin flame connection don't understand how difficult it is. The pain is different because you're forced to look at yourself without the mask. Wow, you said it very beautifully. I, I couldn't find better words than that. Thanks, Lorena, for that. Yes, it is a kind of self-inflicting pain because you are your, your twin flame is not inflicting the pain on you. Your twin flame would never, in fact, you, if you go and talk to your divine masculine about it, they will immediately apologize and say that I never wish to cause you that pain. I never thought you were in pain to begin with. <laughs> that is how it, um, you know, and, 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 and that's why it's more of you are causing the pain by not getting closer to God. You're causing the pain by trying to force this connection into a 3D concept of love. So you are trying to think, I want to get married to my twin flame. I want to get, I want to have kids. It will happen. It's just that it has to happen in divine timing. It's not like a karmic connection or a soulmate connection. You meet, you get married, you have kids, and eventually, you know, it could be a lifetime of joy or maybe not. And yes, when and, and twin flame connection is about mirror, mirroring as well. So when you are vibrating from a higher frequency and when you detach yourself and start viewing your life from a state of watchfulness, what happens is that's when the magic happens. Your twin flame actually mirrors what you face, but in their own way. And that is the beautiful thing about it. And like what MJ shared, you would start healing each other, you will start inspiring each other, you will start talking to one another because you're both looking. You see, if you are going to go into a state of watchfulness from a very 3D mind-focused perspective, you're going to think you're silly, right? What am I seeing? Am I hallucinating this? But from a state of watchfulness, what you actually see as a hologram or your twin flame hugging you or sitting next to you or healing you or inspiring you, will make sense. 3D is what doesn't make sense. When you are vibrating from a higher frequency, you will actually understand. It's just that you won't understand it in words. You would rather just know. Just like how when you pray, you don't get a direct answer from God. God doesn't literally talk to you. Of course, for some of you, it does. God does talk, God does talk to you. But for some of us, you just get the answer. And it's not in words. You just get it, you know. It's it's that kind of... And then your mind interprets it into words and you get the solution to whatever you are praying for. Sylvia, it really resonates with spiritual awakening, but I would love to know what about for the DM. He was already spiritually awakened. He doesn't know we are TFs. I told him about a month ago. He didn't react. Then I said, I have never experienced this before. He said he had. So I'd love to understand the DM's experience after meeting the DF. Okay, what DMs usually do after meeting their DFs is they go into a state of pretense. And they're actually going through a lot of questions within them. Some of them get stuck in the face of trying to understand what this connection is. And that's why it's never a good idea to go and tell them that you are the love of my life. We share a soul connection. Oh, we may have incarnated together in a past life. Oh, I just recognize you. Things like that scares them off. Just let them work things out in their own flow. Because when you start labeling it, they get scared. It. Like with other connection, it's much more easier because there aren't labels, you know, especially with karmic and soulmates, you know, it just happens, they connect, they they get together and, and they start a family, etc. But with twin flame connection, labels are the biggest enemies. <laughs> and divine feminines are always very, very excited to talk about that connection because 
it's strange because divine feminines tend to feel that oh once i confirm that they are my twin flame and they're on the same page as me things get easier but it doesn't you know a label just adds on pressure and stress and for divine masculines that's the reason why they don't react much and that's the reason why they will start saying things that don't make sense for instance for a moment they'll tell you i really 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 like you and then another moment they'll be like oh i'm dating someone else and then another moment they will be like i've never been in love with anyone in my life but they won't tell you that they love you you know so you have to actually read into their words and also you need to give them the space to understand and explore this journey by themselves and that's what this awakening is about it's not love in itself love in itself can be very 3d it can be 5d it can be 12d but twin flame love is unconditional love. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of love that we call freedom. You know, we give them ultimate freedom. And that's why thanks, Sylvia, for your, uh, for your comment. Yes. And uh, yes, for those of you who haven't watched the video on detachment, please uh, check it out. It should be under videos. Hi, Annalisa. Hi, Teresa. Yes, when you detach, it's so relieving. Amy, inner witness. I felt something happening and asked him. My husband messaged him. He freaked out because he just told his cousin and I asked him. He was not ready for that. See, that's why you cannot put a 3D mold into a twin flame connection because a twin flame connection is beyond dimension even and it's something that um, only you will be able to figure out with the guidance of God and that is the reason why it can never be put into words so going back watchfulness all right I'll give you another example so you're with your DM okay and your DM wants to reject you okay from a 3D perspective, how would you react? Oh, your world will be falling apart. Your understanding of love is going to crash. But just detach yourself and go into a state of watchfulness. Listen to what he's saying. Look at yourself and then you will realize that what he's saying doesn't make sense. How you're reacting doesn't make sense. And when you actually start going into a state of watchfulness, your DM will have nothing to say. Because they are caught off guard. Because all this while they've been getting this frequency of obsession and attachment and fear. See, a lot of divine feminines, what they experience is fear. They have a fear that they're going to lose their divine masculine to someone else. Or what if they move on and they find someone else? What if they never love me? What if they never understand that they are my twin flame? It really doesn't matter. You know, once you know this person is your twin flame, you know, you acknowledge it, you seek guidance from from these group groups like this, but don't go and tell your it's it's highly not recommended to tell your twin flame your twin flame is a twin flame. <laughs> it's just practical advice that I would give you guys. And um and, and that's the reason why once you tell them it's a spiritual connection, they will start saying, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God. They will do everything to just push you away. And it's not their intention to lie per se, it's their intention to just push you away because they are just um, scared. They are like, seriously, what's up with this girl, man? Is she into this new age, psychic, whatever? Even though they, they do acknowledge it from their state of watchfulness, but their 3D self cannot accept it so now i'm going to talk about um, about how you can inspire one another by transcending to the state of watchfulness like what mj had mentioned you know example you're having um, an ailment for instance so when you connect to the 5d 5d version of your divine masculine they they will actually help you inspire you even heal you so that's why it's very important to have a constant constant line of communication with your divine masculine in 5d 
And for that to occur, you need to detach, number one. You have to start living life from a state of watchfulness so that you never get affected over anything. So however your DM res reacts or responds, it's not going to affect you. For example, you wish them happy birthday. Obviously, they are not going to respond, right? In fact, in fact, if they respond, you will be in shock. And you're going to go into that, yay, they messaged me, and that frequency isn't good either. Excitement is good, but unhealthy excitement isn't good either. So when you actually text your DM from a state of watchfulness, you do it more responsibly, consciously. You write lesser. What you have to say comes across quite easily to your DM. So instead of writing a 1,000 word essay about how amazing they are and how amazing their birthday should be, just send them three words. Happy birthday DM. You know, of course, you insert their name into it. Be cool. And you don't even have to wish them happy birthday. They already know that you're wishing them happy birthday with it. So it's all 3D stuff. All right. So in my discussion with MJ, uh, I, I thought we would also touch into the subject of how you can view your DM from a state of watchfulness. So when you go into a state of watchfulness, you can start seeing them and how they are experiencing life day to day from a 5D perspective. So you will be the higher self of you hovering, <laughs> not hovering around, but being around your divine masculine like how their higher self is around you. Thanks, Lorena. Thanks. That really makes my day and inspires me to uh, pay more attention to my insights and bring out the best insights for you guys. And uh, I feel peace now without talking to him. I see signs and music that talk to me. He feels at peace and enough space to heal. Yes, that's good. You're completely detaching. You're viewing your life from a state of watchfulness. And you're not... Um, you're not uh, harboring on, on healing or un union. You're just letting go and taking it easy. You see, that is the secret of twin, twin flame union. The moment you actually stop chasing union, union just happens. You don't have to walk towards union. Union comes to you and you start running away from union. That's what happens. When you're vibrating at such a higher level, you start, you start carving out genius in other aspects of your life. So you may be a writer and you may start writing profound novels. You may be an artist and you would start creating art that amazes the world. You might be a politician or you might be a anything. You will start doing extremely well in your career the moment you start detaching from your DM and you focus on your own inspiration. And the thing is, when you are so successful, not materially successful or man-made 3d successful but you actually feel like you're fulfilling your calling you vibrate in a different level and that vibration is what's going to bring you closer to your divine masculine and that is the reason why i'm telling you please try to go into the state of watchfulness so I'm going to keep repeating myself in different ways so that I can explain this concept better. So watch, watchfulness is watching yourself from another perspective. So this is me and I'm watching myself doing this video, for instance. And then when you are in the state of watchfulness, you are not emotional. You don't have feelings that are bringing you down. In fact, everything is seen from a higher perspective. And higher perspective is good because it gives you the big picture. So, for instance, you want to view your timeline. What is the timeline looking for me and my DM? Energetically, you will be able to see from a higher perspective. And how do you strengthen your state of watchfulness? Start praying to God. Start connecting with the divine. That is the fastest, easiest way, unconditional love, service to humanity. If you're constantly helping people, uplifting lives, inspiring, it doesn't have to be charity per se. It could be a product you create that empowers mankind. Something, something that makes you feel this inspiration, you know, passion. And this is what the state of watchfulness is about. <clears throat> 
Okay, I'm going to read out Sylvia's comment. Would you say once you are in watchfulness, whole and in the state of unconditional love, would DM always express their feelings? Even I am happy in my current relationship situation with my soulmate. Or is it not possible once you are in the unconditional love state? You see, when you're in the unconditional love state, you wouldn't be asking any of these questions because there's, there's going to be no doubt. There's going to be no fear. There's going to be no questions. You will just know what's happening. So you have expressed it very beautifully. So when you are vibrating from that level, union no longer matters. Everything. <coughs> excuse me, your connection with your soulmate, your connection with your twin flame, all of it will be in perfect alignment. And you will realize that life itself, <coughs> excuse me, life itself is inspiring your journey. I'm saying this, that your DM will express their feelings, but you shouldn't even think about that. You should just go with the flow. You know, and that's when you are vibrating in such a high frequency. Your DM is just pulled in because you're the same soul, right? So that mirroring happens. So your divine masculine also goes through that, that exact ascension in their own way. And it all happens in perfect timing, the union. And the best part is if you, if you, are, if you are in a soulmate connection or a karmic connection, everything will complete it, its cycle in divine timing as well, so you don't end up hurting anybody. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't end up hurting anyone or things like that. So I'm going to read out MJ's comment. One thing that helped me a lot in separation, I always slept with my twin's higher self, hugging me. We pray together, talk. I see him with my 3D eye, third eye. Uh, so not 3D eye guys, sorry, I misread that, and could even tell him what he was wearing. We had whole conversation and that was pretty fulfilling. Yes, this is exactly where I am coming to and thank you MJ as always. It's so beautiful you shared this. Same thing happens for me. Uh, I constantly, if, if, if my divine masculine and I are not together in the same country, I still feel him, I still feel his higher self and we are constantly talking, we pray together, we talk, we have constant conversation. So even if I'm having, like, obviously my DM can't go to work with me, right? So for instance, I'm having this work issue, which obviously I can't discuss with anyone due to, the, due to its confidential nature. I will just call out to my dms higher self and ask him hey what is your perspective on this i am already vibrating on the state of watchfulness i'm already seeing so i'm just asking for his input and you know what i will feel him talking to me and sometimes i even see him like he is there with me it's like the tv show sense eight if you guys have have the time uh, go watch sense eight you know and that's how a communication with your twin flame happens through Cysalium, which is a hypothetical concept in that show, but I think it's definitely inspired by that. So that's why MJ said it so beautifully. If you guys can just see yourself being with your, especially this is very, very handy when you guys are in separation. You know, instead of trying to stalk him on social media or constantly see if he's online or not or messaging him, Start talking to your person's 5D self. It's very, very beautiful, you know. That's when you will actually realize what love is about. Love is beyond the physical. Love is beyond time, beyond dimension, beyond the physical. And the more you focus on it, the more you actually start seeing your divine masculine. You know, they are just next to you, hugging you, kissing you, laughing with you, praying with you inspiring you, healing you, you healing them, vice versa. It's just so beautiful. Yes, Sylvia, that's wonderful. I can see, but I do feel him. I can feel the difference. Yes, that's why it's, it's not something you need to attain. You will come naturally. And that's why when you start praying to God, you know, there's another way to actually trigger awakening and be inspired is to actually completely surrender to God and actually ask for guidance. Just tell God, like, I'm suffering so much. I mean, this intense twin flame pain, can you just help me? And that's when you will actually start seeing your divine masculine's higher self, you know. It's, it's, it's like 
God pulls you in to that experience of witnessing your twin flame it's higher self and it's beautiful you would love it and after that you won't even uh, feel the need to communicate with your 3d twin flame and of course it will happen naturally yeah same for me my dm higher self is always at work with me because we do the same line of work he says it's very interesting to him to watch me work he will go visiting the building and yes exactly see mg says it so beautifully as always and it's so especially when you guys are in the same career field it's amazing at the input you can share with one another from the state of watchfulness in 5d in detachment yes because the thing amy what's happening with you is your 3d self keeps having an input so you have to completely detach go into the state of watchfulness and then you wouldn't experience the pullback so much Ah, oh boy, I have to keep refreshing my comments. I have to, I'm going to keep looking. What else are there that I might have missed? Ah, oh, Bella, Bella, we are, we are all the time in separation. He's coming and going, coming. Yes, that happens. And you're getting there, sweetie. So don't worry about it at all. Oh, wow, it's 50 minutes. I, I felt like I only talked about it for five minutes. So today's topic, as usual, is very intense, and um, I'm going to I'm going to summarize what I've been talking about. So, what is the state of watchfulness? State of watchfulness is detaching yourself from a higher perspective and completely seeing your life from that state. And watchfulness is usually fifth dimension and beyond. So when you go into the fifth 5D and you actually view your life from 5D, things take a massive shift. The way you view your twin flame. In fact, you wouldn't even be using twin flame you know, unless, unless you are uh, discussing about it as a frame of reference. You wouldn't like, I never call my divine masculine, divine masculine or twin flame. You know, We just exist as we are and that's the beauty of our connection. Oh, you're most welcome, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to take in more questions about watchfulness, detachment and how to actually connect to your 5D um, twin flame, how to connect to your twin flame's higher self and how to actually manifest it. I actually offer a, a service as well that will strengthen your connection with your twin flame. You can check out my file. You can always book me for a pers personalized reading. I'm more than happy to um, guide you through. Um, I'm going to read the last few comment comments. Teresa, she communicates with me telepathically still though. So it is, it is so interesting how, um, you see, telepathy in itself is the greatest gift humankind has. And it's also our, if not used properly, it can be detrimental as well. Just see it this way. We are all telepathic. But with your divine feminine or divine masculine, the level of telepathy is like they can just read your mind. And that's the reason why you can never bluff your twin flame. <laughs> so example, I tell my twin flame, I don't love you, you know, and they tell you they don't love you. You know, it's not true. You just know it. You know, you, you feel the frequency. It is a lie. So you become human lie detectors, basically. But the thing is, detachment, even if your TF tells you, I don't love you, you just detach from it. You accept their 3D answer and move on. Give them the space. They will come back and then they will revisit and revise their answer. And they'll tell you, actually, I was wrong. I do love you. It's just that at that point, you were overwhelming to me and I needed the space and detachment to focus on my own journey. And another thing you will hear about your DM is they will say that I've been working on myself. That's another key indicator that they are your divine masculine. Because somehow they will be like you. At the moment you guys meet, prior to meeting you, they would have done some self-work on them themselves. And you would have done. And that's what actually initiates the meeting to begin with. 
Sylvia, you know my situation. My DM and I have always been in touch with only one to two weeks of no communication. At the moment, I'm trying to detach from him. He annoyed me with being late. I wanted to kick. <laughs> See, every twin flame experience is unique and different. And um, even twin flames who are in union have to always be detached and operate from the state of watchfulness. And that wouldn't cause any misery. Unless you're, you see, that's the thing. When you are vibrating from the state of watchfulness, even if there's misery, you're detached to it and you're detached from the pain and it doesn't affect you. And every twin flame journey has its own challenges. Um, and eventually, as every journey is unique, you will figure it out. And that's why, Sylvia, just go with the flow and you'll be fine. <laughs> Yes, mine still talks to me and says he misses me. I initiate it though. I don't want to ignore but not chase either. Yes, you can still talk to them. Healthy way, guys. Healthy detachment. You can still communicate. Don't ignore. Don't go into that uh, 3D notion of love again. I play hard to get. It doesn't work that way. If your DM communicates, communicate back with them. Just don't overwhelm them. And uh, if your DM doesn't communicate, just leave it there. If you want to say something, go ahead and say but. Don't expect them to reply, you know, go into the state of watchfulness and just meditate and feel your Zen and be happy. Really, if you guys constantly practice mindfulness and being happy, you will shift your vibration drastically and you will start experiencing life beyond what you are used to experiencing. And this is what harnesses your connection with your divine masculine because that's when you start seeing them more and more in 5d and you start living with them you start talking to them they are like your buddy who is always there to inspire to you to give you insight you can even watch a tv show with them and ask for your input you know that's how beautiful it is um, having that uh, connection with your twin flames higher self and that's why watchful so step one is detachment step Two is watchfulness and this two will trigger you to actually form a very healthy bond with your divine masculine in all dimensions. Perfect. I'm glad you're doing it with no expectations. So if you guys want to book me for a private read, uh, please feel free to look at my file. I'm always introducing new services as well. And if you are looking for something specific, uh, please ask me. I can customize something according to your own situation and we can work from there. Um, also, um, thank you all for your patience and understanding some of your, you know, your readings and I've taken a little longer because I always believe in um, having an accurate reading and all reports are 100% unique. I don't use a template. So that's the reason why it takes time for me to write a couple of thousand word report. So thanks for your patience. And I'm always taking in new bookings as well. And you can always ask me about the timelines. And uh, if you want an emergency reading, I always have that service as well. Okay. This is good. You see, when I start talking, there'll be more questions. So how does the manifesting work while detaching? Just looking from 5D. When you're looking from 5D, it's like watching a movie. So example, you're watching a show on Netflix. You are outside of your device, right? So that's how what watchfulness is. But you can also feel emotionally affected by what's going on. That will be 3D connection. But the thing is, when you're watching a show, is still you're an outsider. So start watching your life as an outsider. And that's how you know that you're actually looking from 5D. Oh, thanks, Amy. I'm glad you appreciate my report. I hope it inspires you and uh, makes you help make wise decisions. And yeah, every report is a healing too. So, and also an activation. And that's why some, some of you may start having dreams. You may feel feel this spiritual elevation because every time you open up connect to your higher dimensions which is where i get the information for your reports you will feel the opening too because you have given me permission so it's it's a it's a holistic process the entire reading and healing so going back to your question looking from 5d is like watching a movie it's just that you're watching your movie from yourself by detaching from yourself and that's what's so beautiful because your decision making, you won't get upset. 
Example, you have a nasty uh, boss. You won't be affected by the nasty boss because you're watching your life from a 5D perspective and you probably start to see how he's feeling or she's feeling and you might be like, oh, the reason why they're projecting at me, which is not right, the reason why they're projecting with, at me is because they're having their own issues. And the more you operate from 5D, you actually build a shield around you and, and you will see how people react to you. You have this magic around you, you know. Hi, Regina. Oh, I love you too. And you are so beautiful too. I'm so happy we have such a great team, guys. And, and Regina, Melinda, thank you all for being here. MJ and, and all of our healers and readers are all top notch because we go through the challenging interview process of, from MJ. It's amazing. So you, you know that our reports are all accurate and it's made with the best of intentions. So it's amazing. Guys, do you have any more parting questions? I'm going to speak for another five minutes and then I'm going to go call it a day. Yes, Amy, you will need it in all areas. And one more thing you have to understand, everything takes time. Don't force yourself into any spiritual journey. Let things happen naturally. You can't learn watchfulness overnight. It has to come. Like what Today what I'm doing is I'm giving you guys an activation. I'm giving you knowledge on how to view your life from a state of watchfulness and and today will inspire you some of you may figure it out in a year some of you may figure it out 10 years later because each one of us are in different stages of our spiritual journey but what happens today is i'm inspiring you guys to view your lives from a state of watchfulness and this in itself is an activation it's an energy transmission so you may feel um you may feel inspired to search for this. I also actually offer a healing and activator so that this will uh, kind of uh, speed in your process. It's a 21 day um, healing activator and you can check it out. It's on promo as well. I will uh, share the link with you guys. It's going for 222 at the moment for 21 days. You can ask me about it. And now what happens is um, once you purchase the healing reading activator, you will actually start feeling and seeing your DM in 5D. And I will also advise you how much more work you have to do and um, things like that. So that is quite cool. A lot of my past clients have benefit, benefited from the 5D activator. So you may check that out. Also, my other readings have been a hit. Thanks to all of you all for your support. And I'm so glad that uh, my guidance have been invaluable to you all. Uh, always feel free to ask me any uh, questions with regards to my paid readings. Or if you want a customized reading, you can always ask me too. So I can, I can customize a healing and a reading and uh, offer it to you as a service as well. Yes, Sylvia, our team is amazing. You know, each one of us, you can always check out of our, our files and see what we are offering. We always have promos going on as well. And um, really, it, it, we, I'm so happy we have such a happy community. Every one of us support one another, you know, and, and all of you members help one another as well. And it's so beautiful because this is what you call a tribe. And, and having this tribe is guiding and inspiring all of us. And you know that you always have us, you know. And, and through our free readings every month, we are, we are hoping that it will enhance and inspire your life. And you can always ask your questions through the free reading as well. And uh, really, thank you guys. I see you all every week and I see energy shifts in you. And I'm so happy we are all progressing in this journey of life together. And we're supporting one another. And um, you guys are amazing. Love you all so much. Uh, if you have any questions about my services, feel free to write them in the comments. Um, also, if there's something you're looking for in particular, write them in the comments too. And uh, you can always inquire as well. Um, so I'm thinking I might actually... Um, 
introduced a service to activate your state of watchfulness as well. So watch out my file. Please have a look at all our other um, readers' files as well. It's amazing. Each one of us have unique skills and talents. So check that out. And we are always happy to offer our guidance. Um, I'm going to answer Luna's question. When you meet a TF, you'll feel a heat in a chest area. Yes, you do feel a heat in the chest area. It is very intense. You may feel, um, you may also experience this when you're in separation. You will feel like your heart is breaking and this pain is beyond explanation. You may feel like you're having a heart attack actually, but it's not. It's actually, but some of you all might be having heart attack. So in that event, please call the doctor. But if you feel a heat and a heaviness in your chest, it's due to your heart chakra being activated and the connection with your divine masculine is taking place. So you do feel that when you meet them as well. For each, its own journey. So for different people, they experience different things at different stages. And uh, yes, yes, <laughs> I'm so glad this information is helpful. I'm always happy to bring in new topics there is a thread somewhere in this group where I actually ask you what topics you want me to talk about so you guys can continue that thread and uh, I might write a comment so that it pops up again in the feed and then you can tell me what discussion topics that you would like me to discuss about next week and uh, have a great weekend take care of yourselves this full moon has been intense so um, please rest and uh, thank you all for your comments. I'm going to just look up if I've missed anything that might be useful for the group. Let me refresh. I felt the heat meeting a person yesterday. I couldn't even look at his eyes because they were so intense. Yes, it's intense moon. Thanks, Amy. You too have a... In fact, it's Sunday and it's 7 a.m. So I only have one more day left. <laughs> and then Monday, back to the grind. <laughs> so for most of you guys, it's still Saturday night. For our friends in Aussie and New Zealand, it's already midday, mid-Sunday. <laughs> so what do you guys usually do during your weekend? I hope you guys rest. And... Uh... Yes, Regina, good night. I know it's going to be bedtime now in Spain. And Henry, um, Amsterdam, right? So it's also bedtime there. <laughs> Let me just see. So do you guys have any more questions about the state of watchfulness? I'm going to do another few more minutes and then I'm going to close the video. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. So you must be in Europe somewhere as well. Right, Anna? Oh, thanks, Sylvia. So many of us love this Facebook group and it's beautifully headed by MJ. Thank you, MJ. I always thank MJ because she inspires me to bring out the best topics and we always discuss about it beforehand and that's why we go with the flow. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks to all of you for participating. All your input, it's in valuable and thank you so much and um, I may have missed some of your comments and it, uh, please know that it's not intentional because sometimes you know with see I'm not even able to go beyond a certain comment mm, okay yeah thanks thanks to all of you for participating so yes I'm going to wrap it up if you have any uh, questions about my paid services, DM me. Also, please only DM any of our readers if you are seeking a paid service. This is the rule so as to, because all of our time, it's precious, and I hope you guys would respect it and value it as well. And most of us uh, hold another job as well. So you have, um, so we will be very grateful, you know. If, if you want a free reading, always request through the group. We will be very grateful for that. And uh, thank you, Bharati. <laughs> Always, I'm so happy to you know, inspire you guys. We are all in this journey together, and it's just amazing, right? 
how um, God brings us all together, how how the divine just orchestrates this this beautiful. That's why I used to go for this yoga class in um, Adelaide. It was under under my yoga teacher. She used to use this term divine intelligence and it would be so beautiful the way she would be like how divine intelligence inspires our life and divine intelligence is God is and it's beautiful because once you start taking guidance from divine intelligence and you start detaching and watching your life like you're watching Netflix, everything will transform. So till I come back with another topic next week, uh, have a great weekend. Love you all always. And I hope today's timing was okay. I will try to do a different timing next week so that I'm fair to all time zones. Um, thank you so much, Regina. Oh, okay, so you have a question, so I'm going to answer that. So you can talk about how to detach when manifesting the DM. I think that's helpful. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, I felt like I was missing something, so I'll touch on that. So when you are actually detaching from your DM, detaching doesn't mean you are blocking them. You are completely, <laughs> you know, you put all of their photos in a box and shove it away. Detachment actually means you are detaching to the 3D notions of love. So which means you detach yourself from the obsessive um, thought patterns of union. So you're basically detaching yourself from union and that's how you actually manifest your DM. So you can still fantasize them because you have to understand that um, there is no time in, in, in our twin flame connection. There's no time, there's no space, there's no dimension. So you can actually tap into that and start thinking. Like you can just, even if you're in separation, you can think about your DM all the time but not expect anything from them. So detaching without expectations, but you're visualizing them constantly. And some of the techniques would include writing. So, um, so actually it's, it's so interesting how um, there's some experiences that are shared. Some of my clients, what they do is they have a journal and they start writing about how they want their DM or DF to be. And one such was, actually, I will share this example about my brother. So when my brother was very much in love with my sister-in-law, he used to write out how he wanted, you know, like to manifest a certain, and one of it was he actually wrote about how they would be in a club and he would start kissing her, and that event actually manifested. So my brother's manifestation was on par, and that, because that exact incident, which he only shared many years later, it actually came through. And when he wrote about it, they were not even together. They were just friends. In fact, I think my sister-in-law was in another relationship at that time. So that is what detachment is. So when you're actually writing about it, you're actually detaching from the outcome. You're detaching from the 3D version of your twin flame. But you're actually imagining about them in the purest form. So that's how you manifest your DM. So writing about it is good. Visualizing about them is good. And also, there's so many ways. Talking to them constantly, connecting to their 5D selves, all this would lead you to manifesting your DM. So Regina, thank you so much, beautiful, for helping me out. <laughs> Love you always. And um, I hope I've answered that aspect. I may touch more about it in my next week's life. Yes, Luna. Yes, I know I'm your reader. I'm so happy. I'm looking forward to doing your reading, which I'll do it by today. And uh, yes, anything else? Yes, Sylvia, I'll speak to you soon. All right. Good night. Good night. Have a good night's rest, all of you you know, bedtime, dream about, I wish you all dream about your divine masculines or if any uh, divine masculines are in this, this group seems to be more um, divine feminine, but uh, I hope you all dream about your twin flame. Keep thinking about them with the highest intentions, the purest intentions, everything will fall in place. You guys will be in union soon. 
do not stop believing and keep praying to God, keep connecting to the divine and everything will fall in place. All right. Thank you, MJ. And um, take care, all of y'all.